Oh, yeah. Well, I, I love all animals. And she's very sweet. I think the main reason that most people get into sex work is, well, money. Money and flexibility. I first started when I was 18. I was already looking into stripping during my last year at high school. The thing is, adult men have sexualized me before I was adult uh, and before I was ever in sex work. So the thought is kind of like, well, why not? Why not make money off of this? I'm already being treated like this. Yeah, this one was from a while ago. As you can see, I'm still a brunette. I think, oh God, I think it was 22? It was 22, yeah. And yeah, this was fairly recently. <laughs> I think it was just a couple weeks ago during a camp show. So I stripped for two years and then I decided to stop because I had a boyfriend at the time and he pressured me to quit basically. During that time I was working at restaurants and I was having the worst time of my life. I was like, okay, well I don't want to do this. So I'm gonna try going to school. And so I started going to school for journalism. And while I was going to school, I was like, okay, well I need something that's going to allow me to make money and also be flexible with my classes. I'm going to start doing canning because I can do that from home. I can do it literally whenever I want. I just go online. So I thought that would be the best decision. And it was, it was the best decision. <laughs> They sent it to me in the mail once I had 100,000 subscribers on Pornhub. A little jacket from Pornhub. <laughs> As my uh, stage last name at the back. It's real comfy and cozy and warm. I love it. <laughs> the reason I think why sex work is so stigmatized is an intentional way of punishing people who are not supposed to get ahead. Um, because otherwise a lot of people without sex work would be broke and destitute and sort of I think that's how a lot of people would like it to be. Certain people are not allowed to have this kind of safety net. That's what sex work is for a lot of people, it's a safety net. You know whether or not they enjoy the job that doesn't matter so much as that like this is the thing that's keeping them above like absolute like destitution. I'm just doing this by myself. I am a one-woman show here. This is um, me brainstorming what my website is going to be, like website layout and stuff like that. I'm gonna have lists, uh, ideas, uh, general like notes for things. It does close a lot of doors for you uh, once you start sex work especially online sex work, because this is the most visible kind. Um, but once you start, you kind of carry this kind of stigma forever, where even if I stop and I am never naked in front of a camera again, it wouldn't matter. You can find porn extremely easily online. <laughs> um, and you can also start making money with porn, potentially, pretty easily. And because of that, we're sort of seeing a new resurgence of that same conservative evangelical Christian backlash that porn is bad because it exploits women and porn is inherently misogynistic. Porn is just a, like a genre of media and there's obviously there is misogynistic porn. Obviously there is porn where it's made, where it's not made on an ethical set, where some people's uh, consent has been violated. But to say that porn is blank, like all porn is bad, all porn is exploitation, what you're saying is that basically stripped down to its core, a woman having sex on camera is bad no matter the context and the only reason why you could come to that conclusion if, is if you think sex is bad in general. It just comes back to this idea that sex is dirty 
that if you have sex as a woman that it defiles you, um, that sex is something done to a woman rather than done with, with whoever. A lot of the people who do consume various types of the labor of sex work uh, still shame sex workers and sex work in general. And there's a saying that people jerk off with their right hand and point with their left. They still think that, you know, porn and sex and everything else is dirty, um, but they still want to participate and they still want to consume it. So then it gets very, really, I think it gets very conflicted inside of them that this thing is bad and dirty and gross, but I still want to do it. In fact, I really enjoy doing it. So the easiest way to deal with that feeling is to project it onto another person. And yeah, so we got <laughs> this. <laughs> I think society sees sex workers as failed women. And there's like this dichotomy between the good women and the, the broken women or the failed women who become sex workers. So definitely a lot of what goes into the stigma of sex work is mis misogyny. But it's a different brand of misogyny that, pe that women that aren't sex workers receive because there is this idea that you are less than a woman, that you're a failed woman, you know? Yeah. Hi. Hey guys. <laughs> People are so ashamed to even think good things about sex workers that they, they, they wouldn't even like interrupt someone making like a dead hooker joke. And it's things like that that you need to interrupt you need to be like, hey, that's really fucked up that what you just said. Like you shouldn't say that about people um, because that's how you get people to see like, oh, actually what I am saying is messed up. Maybe I shouldn't think about these people like that, you know? You know you're on camera doing this. She's like, yeah. I'm playing it up for the camera. Are you comfy, Lisa? <laughs> Are you comfy? You look so silly with your ears like that. <laughs>